Welcome back to our series on common sexual fantasies. We received such positive feedback on our first installment that we decided to create a second part. In this episode, we'll be exploring even more intriguing sexual fantasies and shedding light on what drives these desires. So get ready to dive into the world of sexual fantasies, and let's explore some of the more common sexual fantasies that people have. Exhibitionism, voyeurism, or voyeuristic disorder. Have you ever heard of exhibitionism? Psychology Today defines exhibitionism disorder as a condition marked by the urge, fantasy, or act of exposing one's genitals to non-consenting people, particularly strangers. However, an article from Insider mentions the consensual side of exhibitionism as the act of becoming aroused by others consensually watching you have sex. But what about voyeurism or voyeuristic disorder? Well, ever heard of a peeping tom? The American Psychology Association, or APA, defines voyeurism as a paraphilia in which preferred or exclusive sexual interests and arousal is focused on observing unsuspecting people who are naked in the act of undressing or engaging in sexual activity. Although the voyeur seeks no sexual activity with the person observed, orgasm is usually produced through masturbation during the act of peeping or later while visualizing and remembering the event, also called inspectionalism. According to a small 1991 study, 54% of men have voyeuristic fantasies, while a 2006 Swedish study of 2,450 adults surveyed found 7.7% of them reported being aroused watching other people have sexual intercourse. There's also voyeuristic disorder, which is a cause for concern. Very Well Mind defines voyeuristic disorder as a condition that causes a person to act on voyeuristic urges or become so consumed by voyeuristic fantasies that they are unable to function. Very Well Mind also explains that voyeuristic disorder often occurs alongside other conditions like depression, anxiety, and substance abuse. In some cases, people with this condition could even develop another paraphilic disorder like exhibitionist disorder. Voyeuristic and exhibitionism activities are often illegal, as consent is clearly needed when engaging in a sexual act with someone. The most important thing about these fantasies is to not act on them, unless all parties involved clearly consent in advance. Psychology Today recommends that if you have, for example, exhibitionist thoughts or urges, it's important to seek help from a trained therapist who can help you find healthier ways to cope with your urges before you act on them, which can be damaging to those whom your actions affect. Sex in a public setting. Considered to be perhaps a form of exhibitionism, the fantasy of having sex in public may be more common than you think. Remember social psychologist Justin LaMiller's survey? According to his survey, he found that 81% of men and 84% of women were aroused by a public sex fantasy of theirs. But as mentioned before, it's important to remember that acts like this are illegal. Public nudity is illegal in most areas and public sex acts are illegal as well in all US states. Keep it a fantasy, people. But what about feet? When one thinks of sexual kinks, the notorious foot fetish may come to mind. This is one of the most popular fetishes. A 2007 study that used a large sample of individuals found that foot fetishes accounted for nearly 50% of the human body part preference group, while some believe it may have to do with a dominating or humiliating aspect. An article from Healthline explains that feet are often considered below people. That is, some people think of feet as a lowly body part. That sets up a dynamic some people find appealing. They like to feel lower than their partner. They enjoy having your feet on their body as a form of power play or being put in their place. Another reason may be biological. According to Simard Foot Clinic, there are more nerve endings per square centimeter in the foot than any other part of the body. Our feet constantly supply us with information about the surface we walk on without us even being aware of it. So there may be some sensitive and intense sensations going on each time someone tickles a foot. And there you have it, folks. What are your thoughts on these fantasies? Comment below. We hope you enjoyed learning about some of the most common sexual fantasies in part two of this series. It's important to remember that these fantasies are just that, fantasies. Engaging in any sexual activity should always involve enthusiastic and informed consent from all parties involved. If you ever feel overwhelmed by your fantasies or have difficulty controlling them, don't hesitate to seek the help of a trained therapist. Thank you for watching and be sure to tune in for more informative and educational content.